inflation has been holed up in financial assets. And if we start to see a repositioning out of these financial assets into tangibles like gold um, and silver, which it appears that we are, I think you're going to see a, a rush, a real rush to take all of these dollars that have been created over the last several years and put them in somewhere safe. Well, let me answer that a little bit differently, and then I'll answer it the way you intend it. Uh, we are seeing a continuation of many of the things that we've talked about repetitively namely repatriation, accumulation of metal by the big money and pulling it off of the exchanges. Uh, last week, I believe it was last week, we're seeing, and I believe these are the others, uh, and I'll tell you why in a minute, the others that we've talked about on your show, which are the family offices and the sovereign wealth funds that are dra draining the COMEX market. Last week in one day, one day, 41% of the physical gold bullion from the kilo vaults at the Chicago Mer Mercantile Exchange were drained. 41% um, of all of the kilo bars that are held at the CME were drained. That works in one day. That works out to almost 175 million troy ounces. And what's most interesting about this withdrawal is that they weren't the typical 400 ounce London good delivery bars or the 100 ounce gold bars that the um, uh, the sovereigns would accumulate, that the, the central banks would accumulate, that the, even the commercial banks would accumulate. It's 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 likely the smaller but incredibly wealthy sovereign wealth funds, family offices, private investors, the uber wealthy and the connected individuals. Uh, that have suddenly decided to, once again, take massive position uh, in physical gold. And, and you know, it's almost as if they know something's coming because let's put this in perspective for a minute. The COMEX 50-day average rate of gold withdrawals just hit a new high of 131,293 ounces. And let's think about what this really means for a moment. On average, 131,293 ounces of gold, or roughly $233 million a day, have been withdrawn from the COMEX every day for the past 50 days. So, you know, you're talking 175 million ounces have been pulled off the COMEX in kilo bars. And uh, I wonder, do these people know something is coming? I don't know. If you look at um, the amount of silver on uh, COMEX, a tremendous amount has been withdrawn recently. We talked last week about 100 million ounces being drawn out of SLV in the last month. But right now, in terms of silver on the COMEX, there's only 55 million ounces left in the registered category. To put that in perspective, we've seen that much delivered off of COMEX in the last five months. So in theory, there's only five months worth of deliveries left on COMEX in the registered category, yet we were told a week before that, that over 200 million ounces were taken out in one day on the London Metals Exchange. So big, big, big money is taking possession of metal and in staggering amounts. Um, so I think whether you're talking people here in the retail space who are waking up to what rising interest rates will do to their equity portfolios, um, to their bond portfolios, to the real estate portfolios, or inflation does to their cash holdings, um, I think that you're seeing an awakening again, a, a gradual awakening that is continuing. We've talked a lot about this. You know, so much of this um, inflation has been holed up in financial assets. And if we start to see a repositioning out of these financial assets into tangibles like gold um, and silver, which it appears that we are, I think you're going to see a, a rush, a real rush to take all of these dollars that have been created over the last several years and put them in somewhere safe. It's much easier these days to make money than it is to keep it. And I think you're getting people that are beginning to realize that. And you're right. When you called me offline, last week and told me that, hey, you know, I have someone that, that may be interested in five or six million dollars. Yeah, that's not a problem to do that order. But what does it do to our inventory? Two or three or four of those. 
Um, it start, it's just an acceleration of something that I've been saying on your show for a year and a half, that ultimately the market in the United States is defined by the inability to readily and easily source product. And I just want people to know, once again, I am talking, this is what I see down the road. It's not here today. We did a $50 million deal. We can do a $5 million deal. But getting these items, which I always took for granted. In fact, my biggest single concern was finding clients. Now it's the complete opposite of that. Thank God. But it's another problem. And that problem is sourcing product down the road. I believe it will be a very big problem because there's so much money out there chasing a very small amount of gold. What does that remind you of? That's price inflation. The more demand, the less supply is only going to jack prices up higher and higher and higher. And I really think that the smart guys are getting their bullion out of the warehouses now while they still can. And it always starts way up here and starts to trickle down. And you're talking the wealthiest private investors in the world are taking 175 million ounces off of Comex. I would argue something wicked this way comes. And then it will start to transition down to the little guy, me, you. And everyone else, and, and and we're the little guys. We're not the commercial banks. We're not the sovereign wealth funds. We're fighting for the scraps. But you know, when you see that kind of record withdrawals happening on both COMEX, silver, and gold, backdooring out of SLV by the commercial banks, uh, and huge exchange for physical withdrawals on the London Metals Exchange, they're doing pulling out all of the stops to take physical possession. So the big money realizes this and they are doing all they can to, to ramp, uh, rip it off the exchanges and prepare. And it will trickle down into um, into the mainstream, who I think will uh, be left holding the bag, who doesn't have the ability to accumulate stuff after the big money has already, as always, positioned themselves for whatever this next move may be. Yeah, well, the, the little guy never wins because the little guy always is the one who who makes his or her move after the big man or the big guy has has positioned themselves. And they're always late to the party. And that's why most people are never successful in investing because they follow the herd. There's a whole school of thought, wave uh, wave theory, Elliott wave, Kondratiev wave. This is all based on human emotions. And wave theory is very accurate to a degree where, you know, human emotion is very powerful and it's precisely the wrong thing to do in investing. But the big guy is always repositioning when other people are not even thinking about that. When gold and silver are beaten down and no one wants it, that's when they're repositioning. Ask Rick Rule. He'll tell you the biggest money he's ever made has been when buying when, when there's blood in the streets. He talks about publicly one of his biggest deals that he ever did, he bought, and when he bought it, it collapsed in price, but his conviction was so strong, he doubled down and it became one of the biggest scores ever in his professional career that he made because he understands that the only way to successfully position yourself is to do, I guess, become a contrarian. And as he often says, if you're not a contrarian, now you'll be a victim. 